So we dipped the solution in the two sides of the cotton ball and we're gonna kinda like go at it at each side. Um, we don't want to do the most invasive thing, which is doing the vaccine. We're still kind of trying to do a least invasive treatment. Um, but like I said, this one, it did work. It did heal everybody up. But then a couple months later, it came back. So because hers is pretty bad, we're going to treat her two times a day. And we're going to try this method out. <laughs> All right, we soaked that thing. Good girl. So we want to give them some treats. We kind of want to make this a positive thing. So I'll show you our favorite treats. Just the mealworms. 100% all natural. Who's next? Dolly's isn't as bad. She was the one in our first video who had it the worst. She started it. Yeah, she started Whoop! She started it, we said, but hers are all gone. She's pretty healed. Um, Hannah is good, right, Shay? Uh, she has a little... Tiny little specks. So because everyone else isn't as bad, maybe Beatrix, she has a few spots. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and probably, like, hers looks a little dried. I don't know. I've, I've just noticed it. Like, it's almost like a pinkish. I'm gonna put vitamin D oil on it and it's actually just the vitamin D tablets that we take and I just snip off the edge of it and squeeze out the gel and kind of put that on there. Oops. This has the apple cider vinegar, a few drops of the vitamin D oil and a drop of the essential oil eucalyptus and we're gonna see how this works out. So everyone else is just gonna get a little bit, not the soak method like hers. We're gonna just do the kind of dabbing and wiping with the Q-tip. All right. Who's next? She doesn't have much, but I don't even actually see any. But I just want to make sure that it is nice and clean so it doesn't happen again since it did come back pretty quickly. Okay, get your treat. I'm going to give her a treat. Good girl. I'm going to throw this out. We're not double dipping anything. Wow. Okay, she got some. Okay. okay. So Paige is the one who's a little bit dried out. She's a little pink. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. She does have a little bit. Oops, I'm sorry. She does. Here, can you do it? There we go. I'm going to hold your head a little bit, babe. There you go. Right and then we'll put some, see. you got it. This okay. is right there in the middle. Okay. Come get your treat. Well, Beatrix needs some too, right? Yeah. Well, we could be done with like the um, okay. Just a little bit on the end, a little discolored, but she got so oh, much better. Right Where? Oh, right here on the tip. She got so much better. She had a bunch. Okay. okay. I know. Good girl. Hey! All right, sweetheart. Looks like a couple of big pieces of pepper. Just try to really, Good girl. really soak that in there. Good girl. All right. Next, we're going to come out and do the water treatment after I wash out these buckets. And then I'm going to put some of that vitamin D oil on, I think it was Blackie, right? No, we didn't. That's Paige, Blackie, and Beatrix. Okay, so Paige is the one that's got the pink comb. So glad that you can tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girls, we're going to come back and do some nice little lemon balm infused water for you after we clean it out and then have some apple cider vinegar water too. You guys need to be taking your nutrients and your vitamins to boost up your immune systems here and finally get rid of this foul pox. I also just kind of made them a little fruit salad. We usually give them like fruit and things, but I try to just do a little extra when um, I notice the foul pox are back. So we could have some sunflower seed and some blueberry, like some antioxidants, some banana with some potassium. Oh.
Oh, somebody did a good job at the at Dr. Shalen's this morning. So, woo! So again, we're not really experts, but we are just trying to make our best educated guess on trying to help them out. And hopefully it works. They're pretty healthy otherwise. We haven't had any other issues at all. And we've had them for over a year now. I'm about to clean out all of the water bins. I really try not to use bleach or chemical based cleaners. Um, but because I'm really trying my hardest to get these uh, poor hens their foul pox relief, I really want to try to just disinfect things as much as I can because it, it's not that they all have it right now, but because it's so contagious and they keep spreading it within each other. Um, we did nip it in the bud the first time with the natural spray that was in our video part one, but because it came back around um, and I think they're so susceptible to it with all the mosquitoes being out and about this time, um, I want to try to disinfect as much as I can. So I am gonna clean the coop again today and I am gonna just continually about every other day clean and disinfect their watering and food bins, um, just trying to, or I guess feeders and water trays, these things, um, just so that I can try to eliminate the spread a little bit better. So um, because I don't really use the, like I don't use uh, Lysol and the chemical based products, like I said, um, I really try to make my own disinfectants. So this one in particular, like I said, I wanted to be a little more aggressive. So I do have um, one part bleach with uh, water and dish soap. And then this particular one has tea tree oil in it and some thieves. So I am trying to um, keep everything clean for now. I usually don't use bleach. I feel like that's really uh, a little much for the hens especially. I don't want them consuming any of that in their water. So I am gonna just lightly clean all this down and mostly use just so dish soap and some hot water. Um, normally, after I've used some hot water and dish soap, I would call it a day. But after I have that cleaned, I'm gonna come out here and just kind of wipe it out again over here at the hose and then use this um, to spray it all down. And um, I'm gonna get started and then I'm gonna show you what I put inside of the water um, and we are going to kind of experiment. You can kind of maybe <laughs> experiment along with us and I'll check back in here in a day or two and show you the results. See if in a couple of days they're starting to look better or if it takes a week, we can kind of walk out this experiment together and um, the next video we can kind of see how that went and we'll go over the results. All right. Okay, so the mixture of water and apple cider vinegar and lemon is in my jar and I'm just gonna add it to one of the water containers. And the other one is gonna be the lemon balm. I'm just using lemon balm because it's what I have um, in my garden, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave you a list of other herbs and things that you can use for your chickens. And it's also something that should be planted around the coop. Ours isn't next to the coop. I'll show you the proximity to where it is. But um, preferably, I would like to maybe see how to propagate the lemon balm and regrow some of it into their coop because whatever is gonna repel the biting insects, specifically mosquitoes, if I can control some of the bites of the insects, then I can potentially control some of the foul pox even starting. <laughs> if I can prevent them from even starting, I don't even need to do the treatment. So that's my end goal. 
um, but I am going to go ahead and I would feed them some of the lemon balm. Some of them would eat them and some of them wouldn't. So I'm kind of essentially making a tea out of one of their water bins to see if they'll consume it that way. And hopefully just um, get some of that medicinal value out of it and try to just do as much healing as I possibly can. And if in the end it does nothing to treat the foul pox, at least it's still beneficial to them with some nutrients. So, all right, here's some of the lemon balm. I just pulled out a whole bunch of them. Um, they can grow pretty quickly, so they'll kind of take over if you don't uh, get on top of it. But uh, I have another video on how I do my lemon balm tea. So I actually was out here two days ago and I pulled a bunch from this area to dry them out to make that tea that I do. Um, so it is not very close to the actual coop itself. I would preferably like to plant it maybe along the border or within the coop. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and provide you a list of other um, plants that you can use. But basically anything that has lemon in it, mosquitoes hate the scent of lemon and uh, or citronella which I don't have any plants of that but um, they will avoid this so if we could possibly make our hens smell like lemon <laughs> maybe that would help that's kind of my like guess here I'm just trying it out um, but if anything just having that scent near where the hens are then that's going to be helpful I'm going to go ahead and try to plant some of this over there All right, so we just cut some of the lemon balm. I'm just gonna come over here and play Edward Scissorhands, just cutting it all up and dumping it into their waters right here. So I actually am keeping the apple cider vinegar mixture water inside the coop, and I'm gonna be putting the lemon balm water outside of the coop. I actually um, kind of sprinkled some of it all around the ground out here as well. Cause like I said, um, either they'll eat it, which would be great. She's eating it. Um, or they'll at least kinda, since I don't have it planted out here, I can still kind of sprinkle it around in here to hopefully repel some of the mosquitoes. But keeping it outside I think would be best. I also forgot to mention this beautiful thing. It's got all those flies on it and then some gnats and things like that. So hopefully, um, I have at least two more of these. I'm going to hang them more um, from the net. We have a, a net that um, is above their coop and I can hang it from here outside as well just to try to keep some of those bugs from biting. I mean, if I could get at least one mosquito out of here, hopefully that would help a little bit. So, so I'm not gonna pretend like I know everything or that I even know what I'm doing. Um, it's just trial and error and it's like I tell my kids, um, we're lifelong learners, so try something out and if it works, great. And if you um, have any tips or tricks, always share them with others and that's how we all learn and grow. So that's what we're doing right now. We are experimenting with how to help our hens to be healthier and um, we will definitely be checking back in with you and letting you know how this works. I made some tea for you girls. Drink up. So I mentioned to you that one of, one of them kind of has a drier comb and I don't know if that's because we've been treating it if it's dried it out at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of our vitamin D tablets, and these ones are really small because I got them from the Dollar Tree. Um, they're really tiny, they're definitely not full size, and now I know why they were at the Dollar Tree. I was like, oh sweet, vitamin D. Um, they're very small. <laughs> so if you can see that. I'm gonna just cut the tip off, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just use my fingers and massage it into her dry comb and see if that helps with it drying out. All right, come here. They always think I have treats, so 
so I don't have a problem with catching them. Are you spoiled? You get treats all the time? All right. Not brain surgery science here, just a little bit of a cut, even just like a puncture should be fine so that you can squeeze it out. Let's see. These aren't the sharpest scissors, but if you could just at least puncture the top and then that way you can squeeze it out. Wow. See, I told you I don't try to act like I know how to do everything. It just totally shot. Like I squeezed it and it popped. <sighs> Alright. Trying this again. They are all over my feet right now thinking I have treats. Okay. I'm going to try it with a knife this time. And just poke a big hole in the top. There we go. Just splattered the camera a little bit, but there's a lot in here left still. So let's get her over here and massage her comb. I'm having a heck of a time trying to get her. You want me to hold the bag? Thanks, buddy. She's the hardest one to catch. All right. Bring her over here. Put her up close and personal. Okay, we are going to just squeeze that gel tab out. I got two. And just massage it into her dry comb. I know you don't like that, baby. Almost done. There we go. I hope that'll help. Let me actually get, I don't use this for cooking, so if you're thinking it's disgusting that I'm like double dipping, I just use this for like topical things. Just regular, good old fashioned coconut oil and this actually will help to clean it too but then also it's going to help keep it dry i'm sorry not dry let me put some on her little waddle there you go good girl let's give you a treat now you earned it ah, 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 ah. wing buddy I'm smacking the table with it all right we'll see if that helps Paige. Paige is um usually not suffering with the foul pox. Like she's kind of had it the least out of everybody. There's six of the girls total. Um, so she doesn't really have too much of a need for um, like disinfecting anything, but it has been looking really kind of pink and dry. So I don't know if that's a symptom of foul pox. Like I'm not noticing the black dots, which is like the dead giveaway, the scab part. Um, but it just, it doesn't look completely healthy. So I feel like when all else fails, I go to apple cider vinegar and coconut oil. So, um, we're going to figure this out together and stay tuned. We will definitely be giving you some updates. Um, if you have any suggestions, please let us know. Um, sharing the, the wealth of knowledge. <laughs>